The talk I'm giving today is uh, an outline of the BCSH guidelines on eosinophilia. Um, this is an important topic. Um, Haematology consultants uh, see cases of eosinophilia very frequently, but it's deemed very variable uh, how clinicians investigate and manage eosinophilia. So uh, several years ago, UK clinicians decided to get together and to form a working group where we tried to standardise investigation and management, uh, which led to the production of the British Guidelines, which were published in early 2017. Uh, British Guidelines outline um, the investigation and management of eosinophilia so it starts with essentially outlining the, the uh, various causes of eosinophilia and, um, and how they are classified in terms of um, primary causes, secondary causes and causes in which you can't find an obvious cause idiopathic uh, and we try and come w uh, we have proposed a structured algorithm by which you approach such patients to try and delineate um, these patients into those various categories so the guidance is our uh, it's a sort of tool by which you can begin to approach a patient, uh, starting with just basic clinical assessment of that patient, um, with um, um, history and examination of the patient and what baseline investigations you would do to try and determine a, a likely cause, beginning with secondary causes, then moving on to the less common um, primary causes, and finally then um, in trying to come up with a diagnostic um, a model where you may have uh, no obvious explanation for, for a patient's eosinophilia. Uh, we then propose a management strategy for these patients, um, again divided into those uh, primary, secondary and idiopathic. So in those secondary cases of eosinophilia, um, we would address all the reversible, treatable causes of eosinophilia. Um, where there is no obvious secondary cause, if there is an identifiable primary cause of the eosinophilia, we then look at whether those primary eosinophilias have a molecular target, and we propose therapies that you can use for those with a molecular target, and then those where there is no molecular target are treated very similarly to those patients who have an idiopathic hyper eosinophilia where there is no obvious cause. The British guidance has been um, welcomed um, by UK clinicians, it's uh, been widely um, uh, utilised already just within its, its 12 months so it's nice to be able to celebrate that guidance and the amount of work that went in with all the co-authors of, of, of that guidance. So I hope um, that the attendees today will be, will be pleased to, uh, to, to, to celebrate the guidance.